got it all worked out You suddenly wonder what it's all about That's love Think you're on solid ground Just a word and you're upside down That's love Oh, that's love That's love That's love Do you think it would be silly if I wore white for our wedding? After eight years and two kids, I'd call it outstanding bravery in the face of the evidence. <laughs> oh, I don't mean a great frilly wedding dress. I mean a really sexy white suit or something. And Matthew and Zoe following me up the aisle. Up the aisle? We're back in church, are we? Hmm. You want to cancel the registry office? Wouldn't mind. Patsy, we've never had the children christened. We never go to church except at Christmas when your mother drags us there and your father's pissed and tries to sing the desk count of the carol. <laughs> and yet now you want us to postpone our wedding indefinitely so you can waft up the aisle in white with your kids in tow proclaiming your chastity. <laughs> the vicar will have to be given the kiss of life. Why would we have to postpone indefinitely? The registry office is booked for Tuesday week, right? Yeah. Now, if we change the church, bands would have to be read. That would take three weeks. Then I might have to go away in a couple of weeks' time, which would, before you know it, it's Christmas or it's Easter, and we're still not married. All right. Registry office Tuesday week as arranged. Hmm. I like things the way they are, you know. Illicit. It gets me going. Me too. Where do you have to go? What? You said you had to go away in two weeks. Might have to. Uh, West Indies, Grand Cayman. Poor you, right <laughs> after our wedding. <laughs> yes. Rotten, isn't it? <laughs> Some dodgy offshore trust set up by the Mafia. Don't know who set it up. He's dead now, six months ago. Heart attack while concluding a multi-million pound deal. Poor chap. Mm. So who benefits? It'll become a charitable offshore trust for the stinking rich widow and her two kids. I have to change its legal status, you see. Income for her, their education, all that. Can't you do all that from London? Well, the trip's being paid for by the trust. <laughs> she going? <laughs> Who? The stinking rich widow. Don't know. Might be. Huh? Oh. She, um, sort of needs, uh... What? What? What does she need? Basically, she wants her hand held, I suppose. She's still very upset about her old man and, uh, things. Yeah. How upset? I don't know. Very, I suppose. What's the scale of grief when you lose your old man? Hmm? Depends. Quite. <laughs> Rich widow, the West Indies, not bad. Better than staying here after marrying the clapped-out mother of your two children. <laughs> she nice? Nice? Yes. Don't know. No. I wouldn't call her nice. She's quite old. Old? Hmm. How old? I don't know. I didn't ask. How old are you, Mrs? And by the way, how upset are you? <laughs> But it's in those trust papers somewhere. I didn't notice. <clears throat> Seventy. Don't be daft. Sixty. Older than us. Young enough to have two kids. They're grown up, I think. Well, virtually. You said they had to be educated. They're probably going to university, postgraduate. I don't know. I just take care of the legal aspects. So what's she like, this elderly widow with her two retarded, overeducated offspring <laughs> of unspecified gender? <laughs> They're boys. Boys? Men, young men. So what's she like? I've yet to meet her. Oh! Well, properly. Eh? <laughs> I mean, we exchanged a few words in old holidays chambers. Did we? Mm. 
What was she doing there? She's his client. Well, her old man was. And? And old Holiday handed her over to me. Too hot for him to handle? <laughs> Come on, darling. It, it's my field offshore stuff. And it's not his? We all agreed it would be better if I, um... If I, um, what? Made the legal arrangement. Old Holiday gone gaga, has he? No. <laughs> she, she wanted somebody, um... Well? Younger, I suppose. Than her? Than Old Holiday. <laughs> Look, mm. I had to pop in and speak to Holiday while she was in there, just for a minute. And afterwards... Holiday said she, um... Fancied you. No. <laughs> preferred me to handle her... Handle her what? Patsy, really. <laughs> you still haven't said what she's like. I, I only met her for a moment. Well, how long does it take you to see, for God's sake? Oh, you mean her appearance? Well, I didn't mean her views on 18th century chamber music. <laughs> oh, well, uh... She was sitting down. And you can't tell what a woman looks like sitting down? Not really, no. She wasn't hideous. I'm relieved to hear it. You're suspicious, aren't you? I never gave you that idea. <laughs> I wasn't suspicious till you started wriggling like an electrocuted ferret. I haven't moved it. <laughs> I've just heard more ers and ums out of you in the last eight minutes than in the previous eight years. That's because you pressed me and uh, made me feel, um, um... Um what? Guilty. I made you feel guilty? <laughs> you were feeling guilty the moment the subject came up. There was guilt hanging in the air like... Like... Like what? Like guilt. <laughs> just like guilt. <laughs> I've done nothing wrong and here you are on the warpath. You hid. That's what you did. You hid in your own words. You were covering up. Honestly, I'd, I'd tell you everything and, and you say I'm hiding. I, I can't win this, can I? When a man reacts like that, you know. It isn't a question of if, just when and where. In two weeks' time, in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> <laughs> Donald wouldn't deliberately go all the way to the West Indies with someone he intends to... Would he? <laughs> oh. Patsy, you're lucky he gives out guilty vibes. Gary just smiles and you never know anything. If you never know anything, how do you know he's lying? Experience. I've never felt like this before. I always thought jealousy was just plain old insecurity. I don't know what to do. Ask her here, to dinner. I don't know her. Why would I do that? Because you want to see her. But I can't tell Donald that. What else are you going to tell him? It's obvious anyway. What's he going to tell her? Come to dinner, my wife wants to give you the once-over. It doesn't matter what he tells her. She'll know why she's been asked. She's been married too, remember? I suppose she won't come. She will. Why? Curiosity. To see me? Yes. Well, I wouldn't in her shoes. And she'll know. If she says no, she'll have given the game away. If Donald says she says no, you'll know it's him who really said it. Oh, God. <laughs> Donald? Hmm? I'm having a dinner party next week. Mm hmm And I want you to ask someone to come. OK. Who? Widow Twanky. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Widow Twanky. Who the hell is Widow Twanky? You know perfectly well. Oh. Do you want her to bring a lad in or come on her own? <laughs> come on her own. I've got someone for her. Wishy or washy? Gary. Oh, Gary? Oh, that'll be fun. We're going to play mastermind all evening. <laughs> Gary will be perfect for the poor old thing. He can butter her up and pay her compliments like he does mummy. He is terrific with middle-aged women. <laughs> I, um, wouldn't exactly call her middle-aged. Well, whatever. 
Why are we asking her anyway? We don't even know her. She sounds fascinating. I haven't he mentioned her once? That's what's fascinating. <laughs> you want to look her over, don't you? However did you guess? You think I might... Might what? Have ideas. Good Lord, have you? <laughs> what reason do I give for this invitation? Do you need a reason? <laughs> She'll think she's being vetted. She'll know she's being vetted. <laughs> Suppose she won't come. Amanda says if she won't, it'll only be because of the way you framed the invitation. <sighs> Amanda? Is she coming to this grisly evening to watch her husband flirt with a... With a... Middle-aged woman? <laughs> That'll either be Gary or the Merry Widow. Will you let them in, Margaret? Oh, yes, Mrs Redfern. I'll be there in a minute. Hello, Mrs. Redfern. Yes, hello. I'm so glad you could come. My name's Patsy, by the way. Oh, yes, I know. And this is Margaret, our nanny. Hi. I'm really delighted to meet you. Donald won't be long. He's, um, well, he's just upstairs. Donald! Coming! Now, let's get you a drink. Oh, well, uh, no, actually, I don't. Oh, really? Are you sure? Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Redfern. <laughs> What's up? Nothing. I... Excuse me. Who are you? <laughs> Who is this? You mean it's not... No. <laughs> there seems to be some confusion. Let me help. I put our leaflet through your door earlier today, saying that I'd call at this time. We're on a recruitment drive for the local social and liberal Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> you thought she was... Yes! <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not the social democrats. We're the liberal democrats. <laughs> no, I'm not from any political party. <laughs> Part two, that's love, episode one, dubbed. Yes, I suppose I'm not a bad cat, really. A rich widow. I'll say. Whoever gets you will think he's died and gone to heaven. <laughs> when I met Giuseppe, he swept me off my feet, just brushed everyone else aside. Oh, I know he was 20 years older than me, but he seemed so romantic and attractive to a soppy girl. <laughs> rich, handsome, mature, Italian. Then I found out he was old-fashioned and jealous. I was trapped. The cage was gilded, but it was still a cage. <laughs> if I just smiled at another man, I never saw him again. It's so refreshing being able to just smile now and then without any fear of reprisal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Giuseppe, but now I have it all. The children, the cage, 
or the lovely, lovely gilding, and the key. I'm free. <laughs> I'll get the coffee. Uh, I'll do it, shall I, darling? I haven't done anything yet. No, you stay and entertain Laurel. OK. <laughs> I'm entertained. <laughs> <laughs> you are lucky, Donald, to have married such a wonderful cook as Patsy. Luck had nothing to do with it. I just chased her till she caught me. <laughs> Tell us more about Giuseppe Laurel, if it doesn't hurt too much. <laughs> no, I can talk about him rationally. Now... When I met Giuseppe, the term male chauvinist pig hadn't been invented, but it should have been for him. While I was the faithful Italian wife at home, he was roaming and rampant. I don't know how he had the energy at his age. He took very good care of me in that department. <laughs> and still he had to bed every female within reach. His rule of life was, if it moves, bed it. His subsidiary rule was, when things get difficult, lie. <laughs> once, only once, I turned up at one of his weekend conferences unannounced to surprise him. <laughs> I did that all right. I entered the hotel bedroom. He was not alone. I was greeted by the sight of his bare bottom plunging up and down with considerable vigour. <laughs> the object of his attention saw me over his shoulder and went, eek. He turned stared for a split second, then dived under the pillow, shouting, it's not me. <laughs> His bottom was still clearly visible. What did he do? Decided to believe him. What? I closed the room door and left. I returned 24 hours later when I was officially due, and we never referred to the matter again. <laughs> Although, when I later heard that Giuseppe was screwing a deal out of someone, the phrase took on a whole new meaning. <laughs> And neither of you ever referred to it again, at all? Oh, I got a new car. <laughs> and this. But uh, that was all. But that's outrageous. You'd have preferred us to have quarrelled. What would that have changed? Mm, yes, there's a lot of sense in what Laurel's saying. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, talk about laid back. Oh, men would approve. It's carte blanche, isn't it? No, realism. I had to live with him or leave him. I wasn't going to fight his set-up for the children and money. So I waited. Time was on my side. Well, where's love in all that? Oh, I loved him. Fidelity isn't the only virtue, you know. And were you always faithful, the good little Italian wife? Yeah, were you? <laughs> I was, and am, the soul of discretion. <laughs> well, what's that mean? Did you or didn't you? <laughs> Incidentally, Giuseppe got this in the duty-free shop at the airport on Grand Cayman. You must bring back something really nice for Patsy when we go. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? <laughs> She's a man-eater. She'll have our two and spit them out before breakfast. Is she attractive? Yes. <laughs> You'd better go in before Gary starts dribbling on the carpet. Oh, by the way, her name's Laurel. Yuck. <laughs> but that's the only silly thing about her. <laughs> <coughs> Amanda. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Laurel Manasotti. <laughs> Laurel, this is Amanda. Amanda Laurel. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's so funny? Um, nothing really. <laughs> it's Laurel. I just asked her away for a dirty weekend. <laughs> uh, joking. And she said, no thanks, because she never gets involved with married men. So Donald said, what about him? Because he's not married, right? <laughs> and she said, he is the most married man she's ever seen. <laughs> Poor old Donald. <laughs> I wonder if 
I might just use the bathroom. <laughs> yes, of course. I'll show you. <laughs> oh. So, you found everything then? Just filling in a few cracks. It all takes so much more maintenance after 40. <laughs> Is there anything you need? No, I brought it all with me. Emergency toolkit. <laughs> Yes, as I thought. Just as good in focus as blurry. <laughs> if I didn't MOT test this every four hours, I'd be arrested for looking like Dorian Gray's bloody portrait. <laughs> Incidentally, I found a cure for cellulite. Take off your glasses when you look in the mirror. Why don't you wear them if you need them? I've got terrific eyes. I'm not going to obscure them one bit. Mind you, you can create a very good effect with them when you want to. Whip off the visors and give some unsuspecting male a full wattage as you breathe. Ooh, how clever of you. <laughs> <laughs> Never fails. Male hooked, husband infuriated. Is that what you were doing tonight, hooking the available males? And infuriating you? No. Amusing me. <laughs> when in doubt, attack. Who said I was in doubt? <laughs> He's very attractive, isn't he? That's partly why I live with him. I meant Gary. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good of you to invite him to partner me. I like all that young, butch, misplaced confidence. <laughs> Mind Dr. Giuseppe, who wouldn't? <laughs> and Donald? Not my type. Oh, but you enjoy hooking him. Just for fun or for practice? I'm afraid he was already hooked. It was obvious that Donald fancied me the moment he saw me. He shied like a startled racehorse. <laughs> Very nearly trembled all over. <laughs> Just as well I didn't try to pat him. <laughs> Is he always like that? I wouldn't know, would I? <coughs> no, I suppose not. Well, Mrs. Manasotti, now that you've successfully undermined my trust about how Donald behaves when I'm not around... Well, how do you think men behave? I think it would be best if you were to leave as soon as possible. I like you. I recognise you, you see, me, when I was younger. I don't think your games are at all funny. Listen, I said that I liked you. I meant it. You asked me here to vet me. You were playing your game, laying claim to your man, so I played mine. Donald is attractive and upwardly mobile. You're the same. Women, and men too, for you, are going to come at you both from all angles. You're going to find your little suburban ideas of morality a shade inadequate. I may be the first threat that you've encountered, but I certainly won't be the last. It'll be the young ones who gnaw away at your confidence, you'll see. Now, with me, an older woman, you know he'll come back. He'd never wanted to be permanent. What's a few days in the sun? I can't believe this! <laughs> Here I am in my own home having a polite conversation about my husband's projected fling. I thought he wasn't your as husband. As good as. With the woman he's going to fling with. <laughs> when all I really want to do is strangle you or something. No, you don't. I've told you. I'm just warning you, widening your horizons. Donald's safe with me. I won't touch him. <laughs> How do I know that? You don't. I might be a liar. <laughs> That's what makes life so exciting. <laughs> Until Monday at your chambers, Donald. Final arrangements for the West Indies. Yes. Thank you for everything. Good night. Yeah, good night. See you later then. That'll be nice. <laughs> good night, Percy. Thank you for a terrific evening. Thank you, Laurel. I learned a lot. A little chat, you mean? Oh, don't take too much notice of that. Oh, I will. And anyway... I never steal other women's men. <laughs> Borrow them occasionally. <laughs>